Hello everybody, welcome to this educational video. The topic of today's discussion is going to be about uh, daily routines. So essentially how to be prepared for the day of trading. What is the systematic way? So essentially, the first thing that you should do, you should mark out your key levels. Then you plan all the possible setups and take the trades that come to you. This is the basic concept, okay? But I believe that everybody is kind of familiar with this, so I'm gonna go in depth about it. Overall, the reason to having a routine is to be prepared for the day ahead. Knowing and predicting the best potential setup before the setup is even there is a must, and this is one of the most important things because sometimes you can get carried away with you know taking setups that you did not intend to take overall. You should be prepared for either bullish or bearish scenario, never plan only one scenario, have a couple ones. That's why I'm saying plan all possible trades, all possible setups. Point number two, you must be already ready before most of the competition are still working out the plan. So essentially before they even think about the setup, you should have the plan about the same setup. And you know, only take the trades when the setup has been met when it meets your criteria and when the things you want to see you actually see them so you need to know that not making a trade is a trade in itself and it's a skill and if you do not have a plan about your trend trades essentially your plan is to fail so this is very important things you should be aware of about the context every day you should be reading the context what is going on so essentially this means that you really need to be working out the context in the morning, preferably, or the night before that. But I would suggest you do it in the morning because then you can look at the daily open, how did the day started, you know, these kind of things. And this basically gives you the base understanding and instructions for the day. Keep the context as simple as possible, avoid analysis paralysis, use the setup and the tools that you feel more comfortable with. Do not overcomplicate things, keep things simple and use the things you know how to use. Overall, you should determine your daily bias, e.g. you're more leaning bullish or bearish, if you're in a range bias scenario, sideways range, you, sh you should be thinking about these things. Um, I can give a lot of examples and I have given examples about these things in the trade recaps about the BSS. So I would say you should be thinking about a trend direction because a trend has <coughs> The trend has two stages, trending and not trending, e.g. trending and balanced. So when you're in balanced days, you, you're basically sideways. And when you have trending days, you're just moving in the direction. And what I would say, you should watch the... If you want to watch the low time frames, use the 15 minute and the one hour. And if you want to watch the high time frame, context of the direction, you should watch the one day. And also I would say watch the four hour as well. Um, about the trending, you basically buy the dips and pull the trailing stop loss and you do not take profit very often. And when you're sideways, you basically do not add the position, you just buy the lows and sell the highs of the particular range. Also, when you're watching the high time frame context, you should be taking a look at the Elliott wave on the high time frame. Because for me personally, this is very important. E.g., if a price is trending in a wave three, aggressively along the dips, compound and trail the stop loss. If a price is in a wave four, let's say a triangle, expect ranges, take profits, long lows, short highs. Let's say a price is in fifth wave and already putting the fifth wave. And I notice this, I'm gonna get more aggressive with my short setups because I know that Elliott wave is one of the things that I know how to use and I know how to interpret in my trading. So I'm gonna be more aggressive with the things I know. That's what I'm saying, guys. Keep context as simple as possible. Avoid analysis paralysis. Use the setup and the tools to feel more comfortable with. E.g., use things that you know how to use. It's stupid of myself to go and use something that I don't know how to use. And probably there is something like this, you know, probably there is a tool or something that I don't know how to use and I'm just not going to use it. Why would I make things complicated and, you know, use things that I just don't know how to use? Doesn't make sense for me. Let's say we're in a sideways range. You can also look at the CVD divergences. 
to get a context of what the biggest traders are doing, e.g. when you're in a sideways range and you come up to the highs. Let's say you form a lower high and the CVD is having some kind of absorption over there. So basically this, this gives you the context that the bigger traders are actually putting limit shorts over there and they want to push price lower. And the same thing, if you go at the lows of the range, let's say you make a swing file pattern and then you see like price hanging over there, but does not make a lower low. It just stands in the same place and you see bullish divergence being formed. This is going to tell you, hey, my friend, bigger traders are putting limit buys, limit longs at this area. They want to push, push price higher. Do not be short. That's the simple context. Now, about important levels. I would say the most simple things, I would say golden pocket FIPS on local and global time frame. POCs, let's say the daily, the weekly, and the monthly, this could turn out as naked as well. I would say the horizontal levels and the value areas as well. About the biggest trading levels, I'm gonna say right now, there is no biggest trading level, okay? The reason for this is that every level is determined by its context. So I would say, there's going to be situations where a naked point of control is going to be much more important than horizontal level. There's going to be situation where a golden pocket is going to be much more important than uh, volume level. It's totally dependent on the context. I would say key support and resistance of the, of the day are determined by looking for several layers of confluence, manually determined. There is no indicators for that. If there is a strong resistance level, but during the day we break through it and when it retests, you can expect to flip it as support. Also identify the context and the key horizontal levels. You can patiently wait for the trade setups that come toward your trading plan. About the volume information, I would say look at the, your statistics and journaling. Okay, Keep your statistics. Keeping your statistics is one of the major ways to become a successful trader. So about the volume, you should be looking at the open interest. What's the open interest doing the previous day? Let's say you open up, let's say medium term time frame and you're looking at the past, let's say 14, 20 days and look at the open interest. If price is going down and open interest is going up, it's going to be telling you, hey, that's a bearish move. Like be, that's a strong downtrend, like be cautious with the longs. Uh, so you have to look at open interest. You have to look at, let's say, the, do the daily volume and the daily delta. Check if the volume and the delta are increasing in comparison to previous days. You can also check discrepancies with open interest. Like if there is a difference between the open interest, the volume and the delta. So you, let's say you're going up. Let's say you're going up and you're going up and you're having an increase in the open interest. You If if that that's a strong uptrend, basically. But if this is happening, you would like to see increase in the volume compared to the previous day and also an increase in the delta so you want to look at these things you need to this is going to give you more information for your context basically also it's good to check the funding uh, whether it's a bullish or bearish so you know if the funding is bearish this is going to tell everybody along basically you don't want you don't want to be with the herd you want to stand against them so i would say if the funding is bearish uh, be, be, be cautious, be cautious, and the same thing for the bullish. Very nice and simple. Now, about what I would say about the opens and notes, I would say identify levels and set up before price reaches that level is extremely useful to become successful. Also, you need a daily sheet. What I mean by daily sheet, I'm gonna give you an example about it. So, basically, the daily sheet requires around 20 25 minutes place alerts and when they hit look for the trade in around five minutes the rest of the time is basically free watching a chart 10 hours a day will not make a better trader start formulate your plans and then just trade the plans that's it you have heard the saying make the plan trade the plan very nice and simple so about an example for the daily sheet sorry one of my one of my alerts is popping let me just shut down Sorry about that. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. So about the update sheet, I believe it should be very personal to you. That's my advice. Like for me myself, I'm gonna show you my own. Um, I recommend that you build one for yourself. Do not copy by me. Um, of course, you can if you want. I'm not saying. You shouldn't, but I believe it should be something personal to you, something that is 
important for you because the things that are important for me could not be important for you. So part of my routine checklist, basically every morning, me personally, I like to train. So I believe, one of my beliefs is that if you have a strong body, you're gonna have a strong mind. And I like to train every day. And from there, I would like to ask, I would like to add playing chess 20, 30 minutes or like breathing exercise, keeping my lungs strong. And then I would read my general rules. Let's say part of them would be like, I'm not feeling pushed to do anything. I see the market as they as it is. I'm doing what the market is telling me to do. I, I also remind myself the trading errors. So the trading errors, 95% of them are, let's say, ego, being wrong. Um, if you're afraid of this, you're gonna probably make an error. Losing money, that's also a trading error. FOMO is a trading error. Leaving money on the table is a trading error. So be aware of these things, they're very important. So make some kind of general rules which are important for yourself. That's what I would recommend. Also read out your risk management for each day. Let's say for myself, I like to think to keep things very nice and simple. For the risk management, me, myself, I grade my setups. So let's say a good setup for me is a setup which has multiple layers of confluence. And let's say one setup that particularly I see has one layer of confluence. So the grade of this setup is gonna be B setup. So on B setups, I would risk less than on the A setups, which could be, let's say two, three, four layers of confluence. If a trade has one or two of them, I would grade it with a smaller grade, the B grade, as I say, compared to the other one. So I'm just gonna risk a smaller percentage. So be aware of this, make something for yourself like this. It's gonna be very helpful for you. Then I have a daily checklist, which I basically check different things. Let's say I'm gonna check the weekly TPO chart, the daily TPO chart. Also, I'm gonna take a look at the volume profiles. How do they look? I'm gonna read through the order flow. I'm gonna check the key levels again. Then I would move on and I would create the trading plan. From creating the trading plan, basically I just put my alerts. I make myself a quick debrief. And then I move on. Let's say I'm gonna be looking for the day, the day sentiment, the overview would be either a risk on or a risk off. I would like to base this from the DXY chart. Then I would ask myself, what is the plan for the day? Which asset I'll focus most on? So, you know, guys, I trade Euro, I trade um, ES, I trade BTC, I, I trade Ethereum. So essentially I will have one asset that I focus the most on this particular day. And it's gonna be very individual depending on the day and what I see on the charts. Then I would also take a look at the economic data, which is gonna be like, let's say the North Farm payroll or um, FOMC, things like this. And, and I would just add them, add them there. And I do this every day, um, even though we have the news and events, sometimes it can happen that if I don't feel this, that it has happened before, that I just forget about the event. If I don't check it that day, so since I've forgotten once, I added this place for myself. That's why I'm telling you, make something personal for you, which is gonna help you avoiding the mistakes. So one of my mistakes was that sometimes I was, for ex only once it happened, sorry about that. Only once it happened that I forgot about an important event and it was it was not GDP, it was not non-farm payroll, it was not uh, something with the feds. It was something different, I think it was like, um, advanced PMI or something like this. But yeah, it was a key economic data with a high alert so basically what happened during that particular example that I'm saying, it just hit my stop loss and continued in the direction I wanted. So because it happened once, I tried to not happen, to not make this happen again. Um, then I will take a look at the planned trades for the day. And then I would move on with asking myself, what are the areas of focus? I wanna be more patient, I wanna be more disciplined, I wanna take things simple. Then I would actually take a look at the things that I did during the day, let's say achievements during the day. If I had good money management, if I had good execution, if I had good size management, I'm gonna take a look at the performance metrics. Let's say about the size management. Did, did I have a higher? Did I have a lower? Did I have a medium? About the daily consistency is gonna be like, let's say I did this on Monday, I did this on Tuesday, I did this on Wednesday and so forth and so forth. So I wanna keep this on track for myself. Then about the levels of focus, I would basically grade my level of focus, how focused I was during the morning and then during the PM session. Um, and also my level of commitment, how committed was I to the charts and the setups and the plans that I created for myself. And then I would also look at the goals. Let's say, did I want to improve the overall focus? Did I follow my plans? Did I take any nuts? Did I take any trades that I did not plan? 
Um, then also I would analyze my strategies, what went right, what went wrong, what should I improve tomorrow. You know, I believe these are very important things that you need to check on yourself because essentially, essentially guys, um, about trading, if you want to if you want to go up higher and climb the ladder, I believe you should have some kind of a feedback to yourself, feedback loop. So essentially the feedback loop is exactly this. This is a feedback loop because I'm having my questions for myself. I'm, I'm kind of giving grades to myself. I'm asking what went right, what went wrong. And from then I know what I need to improve. And basically if you do not know what you need to improve on yourself and how you can improve it, then basically you're gonna be stick you're gonna be stuck on the same place. Um, so be aware of this, these are very important things. If you have any questions about these things, let me know. Uh, I don't mind sharing this, but I would say it's a personal thing for myself. So I believe you should create something that is personal for yourself. Um, as I said, the things that are important for me, maybe not important for you. So that's, that's my personal opinion, but I'm just being fully honest with you. If you have any questions, let me know. This is the educational video for today. I wish you a nice and a great day, guys. Take care.